in today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'll be answering your questions on reverse polarity. When should you worry about it? You're excited about this, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) What is it? When should you worry about it? And how do you solve it? And we answer your questions on sat-nav recommendations, rear lounge motorhome layouts and critter stickers throughout Europe. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. There's industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans. And it's all brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now remember, as always, please follow on your on your podcast app, whichever platform you're listening to us on. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube, brought to you by arabasecreative.co.uk. Straight into the news uh, for this week then, Matt. NEC Caravan Camping and Motorhome show 2024 it's on from the 13th to the 18th of february yeah it's the annual pr- the annual pil- the, 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 the what the <laughs> it's the, 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 the annual pilgrimage to birmingham I always check it's our holiday in birmingham every year every february uh, i'll be on the advice center throughout the show uh, do check our socials for details of when I'm on. It's Stan 3120. Uh, it's a brand new advice centre for 2024, and it's in Hall 3 of the show. And it is advice on motorhoming and caravanning, not just general advice about things like athletes' foot and stuff. Yeah, like I've that. got this terrible rash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not helping you with that. Yeah, he, ha- he does have a terrible rash, but come and see him anyway. That's very kind of you to say. Do you mind? That's private. <laughs> and that leisure shop is powering the Crespo and Bowcamp stand. We're powering it. 4180. Yeah, Hall 4, Crespo and Bowcamp are there. And uh, our team at that leisure shop are running the stand. Uh, so we love Crespo furniture and we love Bowcamp accessories. They genuinely are beautiful. They're like nothing else in the market. Uh, and we've got hundreds of them on, on display uh, for you to purchase. And we've got stock. Stock has arrived in the UK. So you can order at the show for instant delivery after the show. Uh, And they are beautiful stuff. When people gaze across at you when you're parked up and they see you there with your Crespo and Bow Camp furniture, they're going to be looking over and they're going to be thinking, I wonder if they get the fruit bowl out and we put the car keys in later. (laughs) It's not that kind of stuff. But it is beautiful. It would be a beautiful fruit bowl. That is true. Uh, So go and check out Stand 4180 Crespo and Bow Camp. We're also running the maypole stand so if you need wheel clamps security towing accessories a cover for your motorhome camper van or caravan then the team from that leisure shop are also on the maypole stand in fact we've got john and tash working with us there on the maypole stand from life beyond brick so go and say hi to them we'll be at the show all week and i'll be popping on and off the stands as well so yeah gonna be a busy week that is your shop product of the week. You know what I want? I want the lightest welly boot I've ever come across. Can you help me out there? Oh. Look at this. <laughs> and it's pink. What a beautiful colour. Have you felt the weight of these? These are LBC welly boots, the lightest boot you'll ever wear. And that, you know what? That is true. They are stunning. They come with a removable sock. These are machine washable. So you put the sock on. This is the idea, Keith. Why you put the sock on and then slip your foot just gently into the boot Uh, and the idea because the sock is so thick you upsize so if you're a size what size feet are you uh nine and a half nine and a half okay so you go for a ten and a half or ten or eleven uh and so you size up to accommodate the sock um they are incredibly strong look at that i can't rip them and very very light we love them uh maddie loves the little lip on the back so you can kick your boots off we've all got them uh and they are really cool these are like ankle boots look at this pair here bright yellow oh lovely and then and then there is this bigger pair this is like the man boot the full length boot this one comes up to the top of your calf it comes with a removable sock as well uh, and they're superb i got a pair of these in fact kevin who uh, imports these into the uk uh, they're made in poland uh, he actually climbed snowden in a pair of these nothing else just a pair of these <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, a little bit of sick in my mouth. <laughs> so it's thirty nine ninety nine for the small and fifty nine ninety nine yeah. for the big. The lightest boot you'll ever wear. Love them, LBC. Go and check them out at thatleisureshop.com. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast with me, Keith Gooden. And with me, Motorhome Matt. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. The main part of our podcast today is the exciting subject of (laughs) what is reverse polarity and what do I need to do? 
It's get, about electricity, isn't it, Matt? It is, yeah. We get loads of questions about it. This is important. It is important because it keeps you safe. Now, the thing is, we use alternating current, don't we? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter which way the wires go round ultimately, but it does if you see. But what does it matter with the reverse polarity in motorhomes? Okay, so uh, it matters because our motorhomes generally have a single pole trip, which means, you know, that little electrical trip that goes off if something shorts out, uh, and you turn it on, you push it up, and then all the electrics work in your ring main. That only detects a short on the live side. So we've got live neutral. Uh, in a reverse polarity situation, the live is coming down the neutral. If there's a problem, it won't trip off. So the trip is only detecting a fault on the live side. So if something went faulty, say a kettle shorted out or some, some metal object in the motorhome shorted out and it had a problem, the trip won't go off because the trip isn't detecting a fault on the neutral side. So it, you just take the two wires and you cross them accidentally and most of it is done accidentally, human error, and your safety features are on the live side. So if they cross over, it won't detect it and Correct. it won't be safe. And the and issue is, on the concert in France, the sockets are there, the wires are both black. We are here, they're generally brown or blue. So we can determine a live and neutral. Uh, often on the continent, they're the same colour. So electricians wiring up campsites don't care about live and neutral. They just have two wires and they just wire them in. And that's how you can easily get reverse polarity because the live and neutral are potentially around the wrong way. Blue and brown. B, L, left. B, R, right. Very good. Yeah, there you go. Probably the <laughs> license you know. so, so, OK, so how are we going to solve this? So we, right. we've rolled up. We're in a motorhome or we're in a caravan. We're on the continent. Uh, we're going to plug it in and we want to test uh, that the electricity is the correct polarity, yep. which, as we've explained, is important for safety reasons. How do we do it? Really easily. So it's probably about one in 10 campsites you might find this, particularly in rural France. Uh, most of them are wired up correctly, has to be said, but occasionally it happens. The important thing is to know. It could happen anywhere. It could happen in the UK uh, if a socket's been wired up incorrectly. I've got one of these little socket testers. You can buy them. We sell them at outleisureshop.com. You can buy them in B&Q. They're typically 10 to 12, 15 pounds, something like that. And you plug this in the socket, and this one says three lights is correct. So it gives you different light configurations for different scenarios. So I'll read them all out. So no earth is two lights a neutral fault is a different two lights live and earth are reversed and live and neutral which is what we're talking about today are reversed so if you've got reverse polarity you end up with one little light on the left um, and i'm going to illustrate this for you in a second so the question is how do you fix it well that's the thing you know i've i've, I've bowled up i've plugged it in ah my, my polarity is reversed what am I going to do? I'm going to have to drive off to find another campsite. Aren't yep. I? So I've got a few adapters here, which I'm going to show you. Right. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> Just a couple. Right. So we're talking about hookup cable into a motorhome. This is typically this is a two pin plug. OK, like they use on the continent. Yeah. To a three pin socket. So it's worth taking one of these with you when you're on to the going to the continent, because some campsites are still using this little two pin socket. Uh, it's called a Shuko plug rather than the blue socket that you typically see in a UK campsite. So we've got this here in order for me to illustrate this here. So a three this, pin, is, this three has pin got plug. A, a UK three pin plug on it right, and I, for demonstration purposes. Demonstration purposes only. I'm going to plug this in down here yeah. on your knee. Ooh. Okay, okay. There we go. right, you plugged it in. I plugged it in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my other adapter in, which is a 16 amp blue three pin plug to a three pin UK socket. And I'm actually going to test for reverse polarity. And look, we've got three lights. Which means everything's right. Everything's correct, everything's normal. Now, my advice is you, when you get to a campsite, you take this blue plug with your 13 pin socket 13 yeah, amp 13 amp sorry 3 pin socket 13 pin socket <laughs> <laughs> we're not towing uh, anyway and then you plug this straight into the campsite before you've even attached the motorhome plug that straight in and test the polarity test the earth of the campsite socket before you do anything else okay check you're happy with that and then plug your hookup lead so your long orange cable typically into the socket and then you can plug that other end 
into your motorhome as you would normally. And then what you can do is take your tester inside the motorhome and go and test all the sockets, test them all. Just check none of the sockets have got reverse polarity or an earth has come off. It's possible that an earth could come off the back of the socket. So test the socket in the lounge, the kitchen, the bedroom, wherever you've got a socket in the van. Go and plug this in and then we would actually leave this socket tester plugged in throughout our trip. And so we can keep an eye on the electrics in the van just in case anything does go wrong whilst we're away. Now the important thing is to do it in, in this order that you've described is because first of all you're testing the electricity electricity supply on the campsite correct before it goes into the motorhome yeah and then when you're hooked up you go into the motorhome and you test inside the motorhome because you don't know something as Matt says in the motorhome could be wired incorrectly or as and you I've say, seen a, it many times has come well. out or whatever yeah and I've seen it many times where a, f a motor has arrived from the factory and the live and neutral around the wrong way or the earth isn't connected the earth is missing is either not there at all or it just hasn't been wired onto the back of the socket um, and you have to take the socket out and wire it up the other thing I would say as well is always plug your motorhome in first and then go and plug the plug into the campsite socket so you're not carrying a live cable around you never know. You don't want to be dragging the socket through a puddle and it could short out, just to be safe. Even if you are wearing the lightest welly boots in the world. Even if you are, yeah. yeah. So now, how, how, how much will all these little bits of cables that you've got here, because this, this seems like a, oh, I see. a, a good set you could carry around in a sack, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. You can get, these are like Father Christmas with yeah. a sack. So uh, probably, I don't know, tens of pounds and let hook up cables, 20 quid. These little adapter cables are a fiver. So, so, so do you make these up yourself or do you buy them? You can buy them. Buy we sell them at thatleisureshop.com. You can make them yourself if you're competent yeah. to make a them. A fiver? Yeah. Really? That cheap? Yeah, for an adapter cable like that. Maybe £10 in some shops. Uh, and then what I've done is I've made this cable. So this is a very short-looking hookup cable. It is a few inches long. It's a male plug and a female socket. But what I've done here is I've swapped the live and neutral in one of them doesn't matter which one people often say well do you should you drop it on the plug or the socket the socket's probably the best idea and i've labeled the plug as live and neutral reversed it's a rather unique looking cable because as i say it's an incredibly short uh, hookup cable and it's swapping my polarity so let's say for example in my scenario earlier the polarity was reversed then this is going to reverse it now in this scenario sat here the polarity isn't reversed so we are now going to swap the polarity around and look lo and behold the polarity is reversed we got one light so that's what would happen in the event that you were experiencing reverse polarity and then you would go and connect your your polarity swapper if i call it that or your polarity reverser adapter god this is punchy isn't it uh in line uh, and people say, do I connect it at the campsite end or the motorhome end? I would connect it at the campsite end, so you get the polarity the right way around as early in the chain as possible. But, you know, frankly, it doesn't really matter, but probably best practice is to swap it at the campsite post at the socket. And remember, you're just swapping around the, the, the cables. You make them bring the polarity into line. There's nothing massively technical about it, yeah. and that's why you just need this little, this little adapter. And what I definitely wouldn't do is have a long hookup cable like like this, I'm dropping it all, um, that, that has a reverse polarity plug or socket on it. Make sure it's an adapter that you use so that it could never be confused as your regular hookup cable. Yeah, yours is quite just plainly marked. A few inches long. You can make one of these yourself if you're competent to do so. It's literally swapping the blue and brown wires around the wrong way. But can you buy them off a peg? That's a good question. I've never seen them for sale. Because it would seem like a, a good shop. thing to sell. Yes, I have seen them on sale online. Uh, I have got a query, uh, and maybe if you're an electrician listening, are these UK compliant? Are these regulatory compliant? I don't know the answer to that. We don't sell them in the shop. We sell the components so you can make one or get one made. Uh, I have seen a company selling them online, but you can buy the plug and the socket for a few pounds. It's a short length of flex and get somebody competent to make it up for you. Or if you came into the shop, we can make one up for you. It just seems strange that on, on the uh, motorhomes themselves, there's not a little switch that you can just flick well, to reverse the polarity. That's a very good point. So if you've got a British motorhome and it's got Sergeant Electrics in it, then there's a red light that comes on when you've got reverse polarity and it automatically swaps it for you. But not every motorhome has got that.
Right, I'm with him. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, I know electricity makes you sort of go mm, if, if you've got no interest in it. Uh, but it's really very simple. You get to the campsite, could be wired the wrong way around. It means that the safety features on your motorhome or your caravan wouldn't activate if there was an electrical problem. So you want to reverse it the right way around. Correct. The little doobries here, the little plug the socket with the uh, with the lights that tells you what condition the electricity is in, and then your little pack of uh, adapters make sure everything is the right way around test the electricity from the campsite first and then once you're uh, confident that the polarity is correct coming into the motorhome test the inside of the motorhome yeah. have i got that right you got that right yeah and leaving the little tester plugged in throughout your trip is a really good practice keeps an eye on the sockets fantastic so so there you go uh, i hope that has been a help to you remember those safety features are important so it, it does uh, matter anything else you'd like to add about reverse polarity uh, only wire one of these up if you're confident to do so and competent to do so if you're not sure get somebody to do it for you acdc that's a different thing entirely isn't it yeah that's a band from your era ah It's the Motorhome Map Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. It's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. It's time for the Q&A where you ask the questions and Motorhome Matt, the expert, he answers them. And if he doesn't know, he'll ask somebody else who does know. First of all, Ian Lynch is in West Sussex. Hey, guys. Just started listening to your podcast. Really enjoying it. I'm in the market for a new motorhome sat-nav, but there are loads out there. What are your recommendations? Many thanks, Ian from West Sussex. Cheers, Ian. Sat navs. We've uh, spoken about this before, yeah. Matt. And the motorhomes, you know, caravans, you're know, towing something. It, they're quite big vehicles, aren't they? And so a, a normal sat nav might send you down, yeah, a, a single track road, and you, you find yourself getting stuck. So, what's your uh, sat nav recommendations here for Ian? Yeah. Well, we use the Avtex sat nav unit, which is powered by Garmin. Uh, the great feature of that is you can put the dimensions of the motorhome in it so it will keep you off those roads with grass up the middle uh, or avoid low bridges uh, their really handy feature is the ability to put your size of your vehicle in the other app we use on our phone is Copilot. Uh, really useful uh, they do chew the battery up on your phone that is the only thing any app that's a sat nav Waze is another great sat nav app but you can't put the dimensions of your vehicle in that uh, you do need to keep your phone plugged in in the car or the motorhome if you're using them but our go-to sat nav unit we've had it for years is the avtex garmin unit and what sort of prices should you be looking at uh three to four hundred pounds typically uh and their small portable unit keeps it entirely separate from the phone uh and and so you, you, know, you can't be accused of being on the phone if you're adjusting it or anything like that uh, which is really important these days but three or four hundred pounds compared to the app which is free on your phone it seems like quite a steep price to pay yeah it's true the co-pilot has a subscription so it's ad free and you can download the data as well uh, which i think is 20 odd pounds a year from memory uh, it's a while since i paid it actually uh, but it's yeah it's a piece of hardware that they come with a warranty avtex units are great so uh, it it is you can move it from car to motorhome to you know whatever you're driving so and um, you can adjust the sizes of the vehicle you're driving as well fantastic jason's in swansea hi matt really like the podcast i'm in the market for a new New, nearly new motorhome i'd like an adria or Hymer, but they do not have the layout i'm looking for he wants a rear lounge i seem to have narrowed it down to a roller team t-line 700 or maybe some swifts or auto trails my only concern is the build quality compared to adria and Hymer. what's your view on this thanks in advance and by the way he said ps is if and when i do get a motorhome i will be sure to get any extras etc from you thanks Jason. appreciate that we look forward to seeing you and you're only in swansea so across the water uh you make a valid comment about build quality um the quality and the price point as well does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer um you're looking for do you say you're looking for a rear lounge layout yes yeah um, so you're going to find that harder to find in a European built motorhome. It's traditionally always been a very British layout because you know we go away in our motorhome and we love to spend the day sat in it because it's raining. Uh, whereas on the continent, they generally are outside. So historically, it was a very, very British layout. Adria did introduce a rear lounge layout some years ago and Heimer do as well, of course. In fact, 
we're increasingly seeing this layout in motorhomes because it is a really lovely layout. The compromise, of course, with a rear lounge is a lack of storage, so you don't get always a big garage area underneath what would be a fixed rear bed. Um, build quality, it depends what you're spending. Um, I, I read reviews, it depends as well on the age of the vehicle. Um, my experience is European motorhomes are um, often better built. They're built for winter, winter use. Um, they're better insulated. Uh, we use a range of motorhomes on our motorhome hire fleet, and we've run Adria, Roller Team, um, a lot of European built motorhomes, Death Left, another make as well, Hobby, um, and they stand up really, really well to you know a higher level of use than perhaps a privately owned motorhome would. Um, but I would definitely look at finish as well. My experience of European motems, they tend to be slightly more cutting edge, dare I say that, um, although increasingly British built motems are generally adopting, um, you know, really adopting some really nice styles. Bailey, for example, have really upped their game. I think they've sacked off Dorian and Accounts who used to design all the interiors. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and they've got a really young, dynamic design team uh, who we've interviewed in the past. And, and their interiors are really really cracking so um, I would definitely read reviews um, and when you're going in them all that's a top piece of advice go in them open and close the cupboard doors open and close the bathroom door sit in the seats you know, move the cushions around how does it feel trust your gut and the more you look at the more you'll be able to tell quality uh, and build quality and lift the cushions and look at how thick is the wood under the seat um, and you know you'll soon get a grasp of what level of quality has gone into the build. Richard Ayres is in West Sussex. Hi, Matt. I plan to travel through multiple European countries and may go into environmental zones, low emission zones, as we like to call them in this country. Do I need the equivalent of the French Critère sticker for each country I visit, or will the one Critère sticker be accepted in other European countries? I may visit France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, Finland and Norway on my next trip, but may go to Spain later in the year. He says, thank you very much, Matt. Sounds like a good trip. Can I come? <laughs> it's going to be good. Yeah, get some photos, share them. We, uh, so the Critère is unique to France. In fact, it's unique to each city mm. in France. This was your experience recently, wasn't it? You went to Rouen? I went to Rouen. Yep, Rouen. Rouen. And got a critère for Rouen, and uh, I was fine. But I couldn't have taken that critère and gone into Paris, for instance. I need no. a Parisian one. So if you're going from France to Belgium, you will need to get the Belgique uh, low emission zone sticker. Uh, there's a really useful website, actually, where you can uh, research each European city, and the criteria for that city is on the website. It is urbanaccessregulations.eu. So uh, urbanaccessregulations.eu. Just search the city and it will tell you what you need to go into that city. Some are simpler than others. France is a little bit more complicated. Another thing to be mindful as well is these stickers are, they're a few pounds. How much was your critère? Four euros? Uh, yeah, four or five euros. So, uh, and by the way, don't go through a third party website. They charge you an extra tenner. Go direct. Well, exactly. That's what I was going to say. An extra tenner. I've seen websites charging 100 euros. Or really? 100, yeah, 200 pounds. Uh, they're a scam. So uh, they're not, they will get you the sticker. You don't need to spend that much at all. Literally go to the correct website. Uh, a website like Urban Access is a great place to start. It will send you to the right website and then you know you're only, you're, you're only spending all you need to um, and not being scammed. Yeah, and when I uh, applied uh, through the one for Rouen, that when I applied and paid me four euros or four fifty, whatever it was, I can't remember now. I got an email straight back which said, if you're stopped by a gendarme or an officer, uh, sh print this out and show them. And it said, I've applied for a critère. It didn't arrive in time before I left, oh. uh, but the, here's my uh, application code number. In the end, it did arrive, but good belt and braces that one yeah absolutely yeah no very good and we are seeing more and more of these low emission zones or clean air zones being rolled out across europe and of course in here in the uk uh so uh you need to keep abreast of this and as, as we said before things are changing every month so before any trip go and do your research on your planned destination and check that you're complying with all the local regulations rules. yeah and remember you know it's not just countries it's cities within countries they all have different rules uh 
Uh, and mm. so, you know, I had the Rouen Critère, and like I said, I couldn't have driven uh, into Paris with it. I would have needed a, a separate one. And so when you're actually crossing borders into different countries, this whole thing around Brexit, and they were saying, we don't want a European super state. It's not a European super state. <laughs> and something like the Critère underlines this, because if you're visiting a lot of countries, first of all, you've got to uh, research about which have, have got low emission zones, and then you've got to apply for them I- individually in some cases. But you never know. Some countries, you might just need one. It, you yeah. know, it is, at the moment, a developing picture, and it's a nightmare. It is. And applying for them, you need to have your V5 to hand. So uh, a part of the process is to put your VIN number in and the classification of the vehicle, whether it's M1, and all this information, hopefully, is on your V5. Uh, and if you're not sure, then get onto a chat group, Facebook, there's loads of them, and other people will have the same vehicle as you, and they can help you and tell you, you know, what category your vehicle is, if they're is the same as yours there aren't that many uh, variations on this so it, you'll need your v5 which is the blue and red document the registration document to hand when you apply for it yep and take your v5 with you when you go on your oh there's a whole ton well. of that go to thatleisureshop.com forward slash europe and you get a whole checklist on what you need to take with you so the website for this is https semicolon slash slash forward if you need that. urban access regulations dot eu yeah just type in urban urban accessregulations.eu What did you get type that. in? Urban access regulations. <laughs> <laughs> EU. <laughs> there you go. Not complicated at all. If people want to ask you a question, Matt, and get it on the podcast, what do they do? Easy, and we would love it if you did, because I'm sure if you did, there are hundreds of other people wishing they'd asked it as well. It is mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. Or you can leave us a review at mhmp, Motorhome Matt Podcast, you see? mhmp.info forward slash review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe bell and the button, and then the gods of YouTube can tell you when we release new content and YouTube is sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk